recording is now live. All right, welcome everybody to our new Game of the Month podcast that is untitled right now. Maybe in six months we'll have an actual name for this, but right now, it is what it is. But welcome, I am Ice. You know who I am if you've watched this channel at all, I guess. But today I am joined by the one and only Zachary of Andy's Hat, Indie Dev Extraordinaire, Aspiring Artist, and all that other good stuff. Yee. Yeah. <laughs> but no, today... Uh... <laughs> yeah, go for it, go for it. <laughs> Hello, I'm Andy's Hat, Zachary Raj, Sir Lowell's, uh Pick a platform, name varies. There you go. I've been lucky enough to get the same name on every platform, except for one. Anyway, besides the point. But today we <laughs> I've are... actually been able to cheat. Like uh I just replaced like the O with a zero. <laughs> and then it's like, hey, no one's done that one. There you go. That that yeah. does work. But today we are here to discuss the one and only Banjo Kazooie for N64, the 1998 classic, I guess it could be called. Um, sold over 3 million copies on N64 alone, also saw a re-release on Xbox 360, and by extension, backwards compatibility on Xbox One and Xbox Series consoles. So this game was suggested to us as our first game of the month by none other than uh, our good friend Thomas, oh. SM Wiz, who uh, bailed on us before the recording, so we're just going to make fun of him a little bit right now. Ha <laughs> ha! Um, Made a party, didn't join it. It's all good. So, this game, this game right here, got it playing the demo in the background here on the 360 version, but I'm, I've am i never been a fan of this game. I'm just going to get that out of the way up front, but it is good that we're talking about it right now with all of the renewed interest in Banjo-Kazooie. There was tons of rumors leading up to this E3 season. Yes, I'm still going to call it E3 season, even though E3 was canceled, but... There was a lot of rumor discussions about a revive of this franchise coming, which unfortunately did not get announced yet. Maybe in the coming months we might see something, but still, what a just kind of a good time to talk about this game. But I'm more curious to hear your thoughts on this game, Zachary, because this is the first time that you have actually gone through and played this game, whereas I played it back in the 90s, 99, I believe. So I did yeah. play this one growing up. Yeah, um, my position on uh, Banjo-Kazooie is interesting because I grew up with an N64 with platformers, with the Glovers, with the Marios, but somehow Banjo-Kazooie just, it never came up on my radar. So despite seeing it through all the years and game stores and pop culture, uh, this was actually the first time I've ever played it properly. So what did you think then? <laughs> like... I, a lot of people, when they discuss this game, they're either blinded by their dislike of it or their blind nostalgia of love for it. So that's why it's kind of interesting to have you here for this particular game yeah. game discussion because you're completely fresh on this. No, no predetermined bias yeah, either way. Yeah, I have way. no nostalgia. I have no nostalgia for this game. So, you know, it'll be a fresh take on it. Uh, you know, yeah, someone that uh, is familiar with the conventions, but just never got around to it. So, mm. like many things, it's multifaceted. Uh, certain parts of it. Well, let's see. I'm going to start with my overall opinion. It's a good game, in my opinion. All right. All right. Um, um, outside of that, because I don't want to... With platformers, it's kind of hard to dissect, like, what is, is it a problem with the game, or is it a problem with games of the time? So I want to be fair to what the game was trying to do, its mechanics. Oh, yeah. And uh, not necessarily fault it for something that all games from that time did. Um, yep. Fair with that being said, though, I think I might be one of the few people that has this opinion. Banjo-Kazooie is a Metroidvania. Fight me. <laughs> I mean, in a way, it kind of is. Like, for the yeah. most part, you don't have to go back and revisit worlds with the new power-ups. Yeah. 
outside of a couple of things. Well, I mean, there's, what, two worlds where it actually is required for you to get something in a different world first, like the speed shoes? Yeah, yeah, like uh, when you turn into the alligator and you do the munch game with the fruit, yeah, there are speed boots, and I don't know how you get in there because I didn't go back (laughs) because at that point I just... I kind of wanted to finish the game, not necessarily be a perfectionist about it, but mm. yeah, it's definitely got some Metroidvania inspirations in there. And uh, I think that's actually one of the things I think it does well mm. is uh, I think it kind of depends on what you take, not what you take, but what you look for in a game. And it's yeah. actually something that irritated me when I first started, <laughs> but then I uh, switch flipped in my head and it's like oh wait i actually love this and what do i mean by that so what i mean by that is i like that the game doesn't necessarily hold your hand um i guess i'm kind of used to modern gaming where there's always an objective marker where you gotta go but what i kind of liked about banjo kazooie is it was a big open area and you would explore things and there were landmarks you would go I have to come back to this. This this looks interesting. And then you go get that thing. And it's like, all right, I'm going to go back and get that thing. So it kind of, it didn't tell you to go here. It just kind of gave a hint. It's like, there might be something interesting on the other side of this Lake of Piranhas, if only you could cross it. And then you get boots that let you cross Lake of Piranhas. And you go, I'm going to go back and check out what was over there. Yeah, so... Enough. I think that's, and that's also another part of what I would say the Metroidvania is where you get things that, where you get tools and equipment that help you explore areas that were otherwise blocked off to you. And that's a part of game design that I really enjoy. Um, I'm going to interrupt you for one second there. And I'm going to say that you saying that it has that Metroidvania aspect of it actually makes me appreciate a little bit more. (laughs) <laughs> just just gotta throw that out there real quick yeah yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> um the collectibles so so some of them were fun i think the jiggies were pretty fun because there are only 10 of them so you could kind of explore a level without seeing too much of it um the musical notes kind of got a little annoying at times because I would get to a point where I had like 98 and it's was like, where the heck are the remaining two? And, and like at that point, that I... <laughs> right there. <laughs> and that right there. My always been my biggest problem with rares games on the N64, the collectathon yeah. aspect of it. And mm. it's funny because Banjo Kazooie actually has less collectibles than Super Mario 64. So you have to find the five Jinjos in each level. Yeah. You have to get the 100 music notes. You have to get the 10 puzzle pieces. So in the end, there's 900 notes, 100 jigsaw puzzles, and uh, 45 Jinjos. And then the Mumbo Skulls are just kind of whatever because you only need to get 75-ish of those to get everything. Yeah. when you tally that up to something like Super Mario 64, which is what the game has always been compared to because it's the 3D platformer on N64, we're not going to compare it to a modern game. Modern games sure. are far, far worse in their collected on aspects, which is why I don't like them. But... Because they just focus on that nostalgia <laughs> to jump in. It's like, oh, you oh, liked collecting man, things. I hate it. Why does Super Mario Odyssey have 900 freaking moons? Oh, why my does gosh. Breath of the Wild have 900 Koroks? Like, it's pointless i don't do anything it's you, you get a point, poop at the end yeah, you get a golden yeah. poop it's literally pointless but back in the day like that's the thing i always hated about banjo kazooie even though it is technically less collectibles than super mario 64 super mario 64 had 120 stars versus 100 jiggies you had to get the 100 coins in all 20 ish levels to get one of those stars So, I mean, that's far more than the music notes, but the coins weren't hidden, per se. There were also more than 100 coins per stage, so you didn't need to collect every coin. You just needed to collect 100 of them. Yeah, true enough. And then the Jinjos are equated to the red coins. So, like, Banjo-Kazooie to me was always that Super Mario 64 clone that felt slower because of the movement tech. It is technically a bit slower, 
whether you like that or not is going to be personal preference. Like, I'm not going to say it's bad. It's just not something that jived with me personally. But yeah, that's the one thing about that game was the collectathon aspect of it. It just, uh, I never liked it, even though it was technically less than what it's compared to. If yeah, you- and I think uh, part of that goes to the fun of a collectathon would be like an Indiana Jones like situation where the collectible is just the end of the road guiding you along this beautiful journey. Yeah, I think where the line is drawn is when you realize you've missed something and you there's like, <laughs> do you just check every corner? Because oh, I know man. I had that. I missed some jiggies. I missed some jiggies. I guarantee you, where I got all five of the Jinjos and didn't realize I didn't capture, didn't pick up the jiggy there oh, because, no. because for whatever reason the camera was obscured and I didn't even know the Jinjos gave you the tenth jiggy oh, until no. like the fourth level. So there were oh, some no. times where I was like, "Where's that tenth jiggy?" Oh, and then, I, and then it was only like sometime around Rusty Bucket Bay, or what was the one with the shark in it? Um, well, the shark's in a couple different levels. It's in Rusty Bucket Bay and uh, Pirate Cove. Oh, no, the the metal shark. Oh, Clankers? Yeah, Clankers. Yeah. That was the first time I realized, oh, they give you the jaggy. Mm. So, I guess um, Backtrack my point central. to that is, yeah, my point to that is uh, collectathons work as long as the exploration is novel and comparing that to super Mario 64, I think it works better because you only have to get the red coins once per stage and the stage can change depending on what star you're going for. Mm -hmm. So like there are times where the level's completely different based off the star you're loading in. So yeah, every time you go through it, cause you know, Banjo just kind of plops you in a spot and you just have to explore, yeah. which again can be fun. But then, when you think you've made a complete loop, you know, and you miss something, where do you go? Yeah. And that was especially problematic because you know, like I gave Banjo some praise, and now it's time to give it some flack. <laughs> Mad Monster Mansion, the... <laughs> not even Mad Monster Mansion. <laughs> my my beef was with the uh, the seasonal one. Oh yeah, because like you have to climb the same dumb tree, and I climbed that dumb tree four times, going to the top, thinking there might be a jiggy, and it's like, but what if there is something there? What same, if? Same every time up to the yeah. top to see if there's notes, and I've played the game before. <laughs> yeah, and that level is the same problem that people I think have with the Donkey Kong 64, where oh, you have to gosh. go through the same level as each Kong, and it's like. I, Again, with the Indiana Jones, it's, it's only novel uh, once when you go through it four times. I, I will say and, this. I think Banjo-Kazooie is a freaking masterpiece compared to Donkey Kong 64. There is yes. not a single other game in the N64 library that I dislike more than Donkey Kong 64. Yeah. That I've played, I should say. I, 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 yeah. That I've played. I've played well over 200 N64 games. Donkey Kong 64. Uh, no, no, no. Scratch that. Mortal Kombat Trilogy is definitely under Donkey <laughs> Kong 64. Um, okay. But, uh, yeah. By and I, large, though, that's mm, still low ranking. Yeah. yeah. It's it's so horrible collect-a-thon backtracking nonsense. Yeah. Like, it's not enjoyable. But we're here to discuss Banjo. Yeah, getting back to (laughs) Banjo, and I guess my original critique of it, I definitely, the things that I enjoyed about it was that it didn't hold your hand necessarily. Yep. It was a good open area that you could explore, and provided you got the jiggies and enough musical notes to open the next musical door, you know, you could just leave without worrying about being a perfectionist. So I think that's where it kind of succeeded in that, again, Metroidvania fashion where Mm -hmm. you get tools. And if you want to be a perfectionist, you can, but it's not strictly necessary. But um, unlike, but the things that I don't like are, again, I think the musical notes for me, it was just a little bit too much of a hassle because the eight red coins, there are only eight of them. They're easy to spot. But the musical notes were everywhere, and if you accidentally missed one, you have to spend, like, forever going through it. So yep. I think if they toned down off 
the numerous collectibles and just kind of stuck with the Jiggies and the Jinjos, I think it would have been better. And yeah. also something, I don't know if you remember this from the, or the difference between the N64 and the Xbox Live version. The N64 version does not remember your progress. So as soon as you leave the level and go back in, all the Jinjos and the musical notes respawn. Oh, really? Yeah. So you, I, I had that happen to me. And for those of you wondering, I played on the N64 on uh, the Switch. Yeah. So the moment I went back into the swamp level and realized that, I reloaded the save file. I didn't even care that I lost like 10 minutes of progress at that point. I was like, <laughs> no, I am not I am not going back and getting all those nose and Jinjos again. So. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so... I, I played the 360 version because I figured I'd get all the achievements in that game finally and... Uh, complete it for rare replayed progress too so i mean i've played through it originally on n64 but yeah it's been a long time since i've completed the n64 version so yeah, yeah. i did not realize that it resets the whole yeah oh that is awful yeah so <laughs> is... i can only imagine oh, the no. frustration of you know nine-year-old ice strike or billy or whoever just going back in and having to collect them never knowing what maybe, one was the one maybe that's why i didn't mind this replay on the 360 version yeah as much as the hit 64 version like i started playing through it on the 360 i was like you know what i don't hate this as much as i used to that's interesting and then i got yeah. to some of the later levels like no i still hate it <laughs> yeah well that probably skewed it because yeah once i realized it didn't save anything i oh, never saved the game and closed like as far oh, as terrible as far as that instance of the game knows i played all of that game in one sitting because i yeah i was mm -hmm. <laughs> i was not going to reload anything and forget where i was um, um i should have played it on the switch version man save states would have made a uh, yeah something. oh especially <laughs> on the tree it saved through. me yeah it saved me on the tree level because oh, there were so man. many times i've fallen off and it's like and, and I want to be clear here. I didn't do it to cheat because I, by and large, if I failed or if I fell off something or died or took damage, I just let it slide because I tried to get the experience. Yeah. But once I got to that tree level, I was like, I don't care. I'm using the save states for every jump. I am getting to the top <laughs> of this tree. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't have a problem with save stating through a game personally. Like, I don't have time for that crap sometimes like yeah that's awesome for those of you that do but it doesn't make yeah. the game play and, any less fun for me personally so yeah fortunately i was saved because uh i was lucky enough to get that uh switch controller before oh, they sold nice. out so as far yes. as i figured that was probably the best way to play it because i wasn't sure about the 360 controller but yeah. i will say because I was playing through it on the 360 version, so I loaded it up on my N64, because it's been a while since I've actually played that version. So I loaded it up on my N64 just to see what it looked like through the retro tank. And game holds up really well. I will say that. Like, it holds up graphically yeah. very well. But playing through it with an N64 controller was actually better to me than the 360 Xbox One series controller. Like, I think yeah. it has better controls on the actual N64, which is kind of funny. Because it's like, on the N64 controller, it's like, hold Z and then press one of the C buttons to do your corresponding oh, action. And don't forget about needing three hands to hold this beast. <laughs> but it's like, so, jump, attack, yeah. and then Z plus a C button did all your functions. Like, that's great. Whereas yeah. on the Xbox controller, it's like you got your movement stick. And then... To activate, like, running with Kazoo, you have to press this trigger, then this trigger, or this trigger, and then this trigger, and it's like, okay, that's weird. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, because with this one, it was just the Z button, so it was plus really the, simple. Yeah, Z plus a C yeah. button, and it works really well. It's like, all right, press both triggers, it's like, okay, that's weird. And then it's like, to fire an egg, you gotta press the trigger, and then the Y button, it's like, okay, that's kind of like the N64 version. But yeah, I, that didn't even occur to me, the jump, Kazooie controls. Jump and attack, so that's kind of the same. But then it got to the part where you have to use the um, invincibility, the golden feather power, and it's like, press yeah. press the trigger and then press right on the thumbstick to activate. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> and so I'm like, activating this power completely unintentionally because I'm trying to, like, crouch to shoot an egg 
It's like, no, you need to do this. And I'm trying to change the camera so I could shoot the egg. I'm like, no, stop. And yeah. so the camera on the 360 version, it doesn't have the incremental steps like the N64 version did either. It kind of just keeps going. Like, it's a lot smoother in that regard, yeah. but it's not as precise as just C button controls for the camera. Yeah. So, Talking about one of the negatives, though, <laughs> now that you camera. brought it up, that camera, <laughs> camera. wanted to, I, that camera wanted to kill me. Yes, it does. Cameras have aged terribly. Yes, they have. It's, that's what's funny. Like, I, I still, to this day, play a lot of N64, so I'm used to the jank, so it didn't bother me yeah. as much. But there were some parts in this game where it's just like, instant 180, swap the camera. Like, wait, what? Yeah, I mean, not even that. I had weird spots where, like, so if this is the floor and this is the camera, like, it's just going in and it's like, whoop, upside down. It's like, what the heck's going on? <laughs> like, I turned a corner and now the camera's upside down facing the wrong way. And yep. Yeah, that camera wanted to murder me. Oh, that the camera's so bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Like, people Something bag, else people bag that... on the Super Mario 64 camera, but it's got nothing no, on the... Uh, it's got yeah. nothing on the uh, bipolar uh, state banjos yeah. camera. I'm surprised. <laughs> as good as Rare was as at platformers, they never mastered the camera. I don't you know? mind it in Conquer though. Like I, I haven't played Conquer, so I'll I'll, okay, I'll I, give I, you that one. I but. I'm being a big N64 fan that I am. It always boggles everyone's mind that I don't like Rare's games on the platform mm -hmm. outside of like GoldenEye, Perfect Dark. And yeah. Conquer. Like, I don't care for the banjo games personally. Like, I don't I I don't think I don't think I should say I hate them anymore. I don't hate them anymore. This replay, I don't hate it anymore, but it's still not my favorite game. Yeah. But I I do hate Donkey Kong sixty four. Like that game can <laughs> yeah, that game could be erased from history and I wouldn't bat an eye. But mm -hmm. Jet Force Gemini, I love that game yeah. for the first half of it until it becomes a collectathon grind because that's the thing I hate yeah. the most about Rare's titles is that they were collectathon grinds. I never found all those stupid panda villagers. Oh, I dear. never did. Ugh. I got so far in the game and I just I could never find all of those. No, nope. no. Nope. But yeah, getting back yeah. to Banjo. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't even remember what I was talking about now. What were we talking? We were talking about, about the camera, and then we moved on to something. I think we were still on the cameras, yeah, like the camera. difference between yeah, like Conquer's rare camera, cameras. Conquer's camera. Yeah. So yeah, the camera and Conquer, I never felt hindered by comparatively. I mean, they mastered their craft with the camera there. I don't really remember it in DK sixty four either, but my memory of that game is twenty two yeah. years old at this point because I have not yeah. touched that game again yeah. since. Yeah, but the thing that I don't like, and another like little nitpick, I don't know if it's just a me thing. It might be perfect, and I just don't like it. But <laughs> There's uh, wrong with that. uh, yeah, I don't like personally that when you like hit first person camera, it's aligned to banjo. Mm. I don't know because like I would have instances where it's like, what's that in the distance? And banjo's facing this way, and then the camera just. Whoop, Oh yeah, I wanted to look that way, camera. Yeah, so maybe that, maybe that's it, just me. It takes but... some getting used to for sure. I mean, it makes sense to me, but it definitely could cause problems, and you just have to end up rotating all the way around. So yeah, yeah, I can understand that. I, I can something understand else that. like uh, the eggs were hard to aim. I think it was like a controller dead zone because oh, right no. in that middle oh. spot where you need to like make. A smidge turn. It just wouldn't do it. Nope. And then I'd hit like a smidge more and it's like, oh, now turning. It's like <laughs> that way. Yeah. And it's, uh, it wasn't that bad, yeah. but especially during the last battle, that was such a killer. I needed save states there too because I could not get Kazooie to aim where I wanted Kazooie to fire. Yeah, I lost uh, I, I lost to Gruntilda a lot in this replay. Oh, yeah. man, that was bad. <laughs> Gruntilda is something else. Like, Gruntilda <laughs> is proof. That rare has always been delinquents. Like, did you read some of her? Like, one of her the things her sister said that like made me pause. I was like, oh man! It's like her party favor is performing a gross strip tease. Like, 
Yeah. Right? This game's rated E. Yeah, there's And you have your main you have your main antagonist performing a strip tease. Like there's a there's a I don't lot. need that game. There's a yeah. lot of innuendo in this game if you look yeah, for it. And, and there's like, a lot of adult humor in this game if yeah. you look for it. And there was like oh, dung man. sandwiches. Like she yes, eats dog yes. dung sandwiches. Oh, hang on, doggo break. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yes, yes. Doggo. Doggo. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, like <laughs> she was. That game was n- a mature at times. Yeah the the thing and about- the toilet the toilet oh, getting flushed where you go down. Yeah, and like <laughs> that poor cr- that poor thing. Its job was to eat fecal matter <laughs> of ghosts and like, monsters. Yeah. Oh man. So uh, yeah, that's enough of that. Like the- you could write a book about that. <laughs> I, it just comes down to like. You need to remember, this is the era of South Park. This is yeah. the era of, like, Adam Sandler potty humor. Like, yeah. it makes sense. And I I can appreciate the humor in this game a little bit more than some others. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of British, like, straight-up British humor. Yeah. But this was a little more neutral compared to some of Rare's other stuff. So, like, I didn't mind it as much. But yeah. one of... Uh, Outside of the collectathon aspect of it, I don't really care about the characters of Banjo or Kazooie. Banjo is an idiot, and Kazooie is a B. So I'm gonna I, I'm I, gonna tell you this right now. I couldn't. I didn't. This really is get gonna into be con- controversial. Hot take. Oh, oh, we like it. The game just needs to be called Kazooie. Yes, because Kazooie did all the work. Yes, yes she did. <laughs> all the abilities go to Kazooie. Yes, you could take do. Banjo out of the equation. And it'd probably be a better game. It would be because I'm just gonna... swapping between the two made it clunky. Yeah, because like <laughs> Banjo literally did nothing better. He didn't even walk better. Because no, Kazooie he's slow. didn't Yeah, he was slow. He slipped on ice. He couldn't <laughs> walk up slopes. Kazooie did all the work. I just wanted to play as Kazooie ninety nine percent of the time. Yes. Yes. The only useful thing Banjo did is become a washing machine. <laughs> It's so true, and it's like, why couldn't Kazooie do those transformations anyway? Like, yeah. that's that's the literal truth of it. Like, Banjo is worthless. Like, no wonder Kazooie's <laughs> such a pissed off bee. Like, yeah. it has to do everything. Yeah. Like, she oh, carries them around. Like, and she probably so wouldn't bad. need those red feathers to fly if she wasn't carrying Banjo around. <laughs> Big worthless sack of crap that he is. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so the game just could have been oh. Kazooie, so... Yes. Like, I know there are people that are going to hate that take. Oh, and I, no, that's and I, awesome. Whatever, but, <laughs> but yeah, someone that's never played it before, my fresh opinion is that it should have just been called Kazooie. It should have just been so called good. Kazooie. <laughs> and it would have so been a good. better game. It's so good. It would have been a better game. <laughs> so good. Oh, um, man. Yeah. Uh, oh, gosh. Okay. Yeah, on that, yes. Uh, before. Did you want to segue into something or I just want to state something real quick. Like I started this I started this off saying I hated this game. Like I don't think that's actually fair to this game. I don't hate it anymore. Like I'm still pretty indifferent to it. I'm probably never gonna touch it again. But like it wasn't the worst replay that I was fearing it would be. But there's still a lot of moments in this game. Rusty Bucket Bay, like this scene right here that it's showing in particular, like I loathe that part. Yeah, and I loathed this game's over reliance on its awful swimming mechanic. Like, there's so much of it. Yeah, it's, that killed me several times. It's like, like there's like what three major parts where you have to rely on the swimming mechanic of this game, and it's like when there's only nine levels and thirty percent of them have like an over reliance on the swimming mechanic. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's not good. It's a limitation of the time, for sure. But it's like, it sucks. <laughs> like, I could not, 
I almost quit at Clankers because I couldn't free Clanker <laughs> because I literally could not swim yeah. through the stupid key. I could not get the stupid bubbles to survive. I got like four game overs at Clankers trying to do that stupid key before I finally got it again. And longtime yeah. players of this game are be like, oh, what? how did you not do that? Oh, you're stupid. And it's like, well, and, and I, it's like, it's the camera and there was no <laughs> middle ground. You either had absolute control pressing a going one mile an hour Yep. Or you are a rocket just going straight and you can't see. Yeah. And it was the same thing with like uh, the rocket when you're flying and you got to get the snowman's hat. Oh, and like, man. I, can't, I don't I, know where I'm aiming. I didn't mind that one as much. It took a little bit more time to prep it. But I like it was more forgiving since you didn't have to worry about the breath mechanics. Like, yeah, there was plenty of red feathers. Like, it wasn't so bad for that part. Yeah. Like, I'll defend Fair. the flying. I'll defend the flying. But the swimming mechanic was just not okay for me yeah and that's what it is like i don't really have anything else to say on that like if you're gonna go into this game new just know that there's swimming nonsense that you have to worry about <laughs> yeah i think the final critique i would have is like i said i like it when a game doesn't hold your hand Yep, but there were some moments where it could have been a lot clearer. Where I had to look up a guy and go, "Oh, duh!" Like the bucket that you had to plug. Oh yeah, poop to into lower. It. I never. Yeah, I did not figure that out. I was literally on the tree. No, no, the level before the tree. Mm. Yeah, Rusty Bucket Bay. I was on Rusty Bucket Bay, still wondering how I lowered the water in the sandcastle until I finally looked it up. It's like. Okay, I didn't even look it up. How do you lower the water in the sand castle? I looked up, where's the pebble? <laughs> and then it's like, there was never a pebble. There was never a pebble. You, had, I would have never figured that out. Yeah. And also the, like the island that the shark was guarding. Oh, yeah. I was convinced that was something big. And to be fair, it is, there is something there, but not something that really matters. Because the stop and swap was removed. So yeah. that's that doesn't really do anything for the game. <laughs> well, and that's... It's I guess I, the 360 version. Yeah. I guess I do want to add to that. I feel like this is another way that it could uh, swing either way. So you could either... I don't like that. I don't personally like that they kept the stop and swap in despite the fact that they knew it wouldn't work. And to describe to those that maybe don't know what it is. So originally when the N64 was being developed, the RAM would stay in the system for 10 seconds after power down. This man is so you could, research. I love this. Yeah. So <laughs> you could take out. So what it is, is you would uh, get six golden or six colored eggs in a key in Banjo-Kazooie. And then you could take the con the card out while you powered off the game, put Banjo Tooie in, and then it would unlock stuff in that game. Yep. Nintendo changed their hardware on the N64. This window closed to one second. That's not good because you know that's fast movement. You could damage hardware, and it wasn't good for the system anyway. So they removed the stop and swap, mm -hmm. which is fine. Hardware changes, but I don't like that they kept it in. Yeah. So that's just me. I mean, technically, I, can you actually get that stuff on the N64 version without cheat codes now, though? Because, like, you can still get them with the cheat codes. And there's plenty of games that have cut content yeah, still but, in them uh, that are accessible through cheat codes. I mean, Hot Copy yeah, Mod but, uh, being a what's prime his example. Name, what's his name? Mumbo still mentions it. Like, if you get 100 diggies, the end credit still mentions that they're there. Mm. Which, to me, makes it worse because this is the 90s, before yeah, the internet. So, yeah. now all of a sudden, you know, there's six eggs out there, and you know where they are, but yeah. you don't know how to activate them because you can't. Yeah. Without an obscure cheat code. Granted, I don't know when the cheat codes were released. Maybe they were released in word of mouth, but I, I wasn't there for that time, so... I don't if you're in the, But, yeah, so... <laughs> Now the game's showing you to get something that does nothing that you need cheat codes to unlock. Mm -hmm. The only defense that you could give me is that it's something extra for someone that maybe perfected the game and they want a little bit more. But even then, you can only access them with cheat codes. So I don't even buy into that argument of it being an extra for the purist. Yeah, it's completely unessential. 
Yeah. It's great that they added it back in the Xbox version. Yeah. I think that validates it a little bit. Yeah, so for it those, unlocks, again, I don't know. Yeah. It unlocks stuff in Banjo Tooie and Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolt. Oh, I didn't know Nuts and Bolts. Yeah, That's cool. Got you, Although it Nuts and Bolts is a sucky game. I never played yeah. it. I will, <laughs> I will say now I have a little bit of context because, again, I never played Banjo. So yeah. uh, my experience with Nuts and Bolts was always, oh, yeah, that's that game that Banjo-Kazooie fans don't like. Yeah, and exactly. now that I've played Banjo-Kazooie, I'm <laughs> right. like, yeah, I kind of see why. Yeah. <laughs> it's not faithful at all to the IP. No, it's something, it's something completely out there. Yeah. But that's a discussion so, for another day. We might have to come better. back to that one. We might have to come back yeah. to that one. I will say, yeah, I'm definitely going to play Banjo Tooie now. I'm not going to grind it like I did Banjo Kazooie, but yeah, you joined me in on this it, one pretty late. Yeah, yeah. So, but now that I've played the first one and enjoyed it somewhat, uh, I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. Yeah, I so. might finally give Banjo Tooie a try. I never played Banjo Tooie after how much I disliked this one back in the day, <laughs> but yeah. I might have to give it a try too on the 360 version. Just yeah, that's the one I'm gonna have to try. Point. I don't think it's uh I don't think it's on the expansion pack, so No, it's I on think, Game Pass uh, though. <laughs> yeah, it's on Game Pass, it's which I Game have. So. That's actually yeah, that's how I started this play. playthrough of Banjo kazooie was uh doing it through uh um XCloud. <laughs> oh fun. <laughs> I had it on XCloud through my Steam Deck. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I can use the TV today, so I loaded it up on the TV and was playing it on there. And it's like Latency wasn't bad through streaming it, so it worked out. So if you only have a phone to play it on, you got good internet, like, it'll work. Yeah. But... I tried a little bit of that. It, it worked pretty good, the uh, xCloud. Yeah. It was it was kind of neat. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting addition. But, yeah. Um, I don't know. Overall, like, I'm a lot more favorable towards Banjo-Kazooie now. I will say that, like... It's never going to be one of my top 10 N64 games. Like, I have a lot of love for a lot of games on that system, even if they aren't popular. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, graphically, this game is definitely one of the best that the system has to offer. Like, Rare perfected what they were doing on the N64. Like, there's a lot of different textures working in this game, which is pretty impressive for the hardware. Um, everything looks clear. Like, everything looks smooth, especially for an N64 game. The... Um, uh, how do I put this? Sound effects are pretty good. Music is good. Um, I really am not the biggest fan of these tunes. Like, it's not my style of music for a game. Like, it's more folksy. I'm not a big folksy type of person. But yeah. It's good. Like, I'm not going to say it's bad just because I don't like it. Like, it's good. It's good for what it is. Grant Kirkhope did a great job with the soundtrack on this game. I can see why it's beloved as it is. Yeah. Um, like, overall, it is, like, a well-made game. It's a very polished game for what it is, even I wanna, if you might not like collectathons yeah. or the humor yeah. or something. I do want to give a little bit of credit to that. Like, uh, the models are a little iffy, but when it comes to the levels, in my opinion, the levels are gorgeously textured oh, yeah. for what the hardware allowed. Oh, like, yeah. uh, I was... I, you know, like Rusty Bucket Bay, not a big fan of the platforming of it, but oh gosh, as a level, one. the textures were really good. And I don't know, I really like the boat they made yeah. in the middle of that harbor, like, yeah. and the oil slicky texture on the water. So, you know, props to the texture work. It's really good. Yep. Like, it is definitely an impressive game considering the N64's texture limitations. Like, yeah. the N64 was an absolute technological monster for the time period. Like, people yeah. do not want to give it the props it deserves for that. Like, they like to focus on the forced anti-aliasing in the modern age where it doesn't look as good. If you play this stuff on a CRT, it looks gorgeous. But, yeah, like, sure, you can focus on that. But if it didn't have that texture buffer issue, that limitation oh, that it yeah. ended up having, like... This system would have been so much more capable than what it is. Yeah. Like, um, look at Rogue Squadron 1 or Battle for Naboo on N64 because Factor 5 were freaking wizards and they were able to... They were to, geniuses. They were able the to crap. use the cartridge itself as extra texture RAM. So, like, that is why nothing in that entire era could come close to what the visuals in Rogue Squadron and Battle for Naboo pulled off. Like, it's insane. But, yeah. But, like... 
what Rare did here with those texture limitations, they probably did some sort of similar trick to what Factor 5 did. I can't say for certain since I haven't researched the development of Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if they used a similar trick of using the cartridge's extra texture buffering RAM type deal stuff. Because this is just way too impressive for what other games could pull off with that limitation in place. Like, it's insane. Yeah. So, always got to give props where props are due there. Like, this this game is insanely well-polished in almost every regard. And it quite literally comes down to my own personal preferences of not liking collect-a-thons that I'm not yeah. the biggest fan of it. And just the slower movement tech of Banjo. Like, that's literally the only staying issues that don't put this game higher up in my rankings now. Like, this replay has... Like, there's a few moments in Rusty Bucket Bay, anything with the swimming, like, I still despise it, but, like, overall, a lot more favorable towards the game, like I've been saying throughout this whole thing, but, um, like, it's just, I didn't give enough credit to, to this game for years. Like, that's one of the things I am grateful to about this replay. I'm a little bit more, uh, <laughs> like, I'm older, I'm older, yeah. obviously, but... I can appreciate what it was trying to do, what it was going for, even if the implementation might not be my favorite. So, yeah. I don't know. I think it's... Uh, I can see why it has the fans it does now. Like, a couple, couple days, a couple weeks ago, like, before we started this, I've been like, ah, oh, Banjo fan, okay, you go enjoy your game. I don't I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll, I'll actively bug... Like, I would bag on people playing it that are my friends. <laughs> like, when Wiz yeah. was streaming it and he'd be complaining about something, I'm like, welcome to Banjo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you brought this on yourself. <laughs> You're playing banjo. What'd you expect? Yeah. And so, I mean, I had a few of those moments still with the swimming and stuff, but in yeah. the Gruntilda fight, my gosh, that fight made me a bit salty. It took me yeah. like way too long to beat her. <laughs> but yeah, I um, think, uh, yeah. I think my closing thoughts, cause I think we're winding down. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. yeah I think my closing time. thoughts. So yeah, again, uh, someone that hasn't played it before, but lived through the platforming era, the things that I see that work and that people definitely enjoy is that sense of exploration in games like, you know, Metroid, where mm -hmm. you kind of see things that draw your attention, but it's not useful to you now, but maybe it's useful to you later. And there's enough collectibles with the jiggies, the jet, the jet, I can't. Jinjos. Jinjos, yeah. And the, the honeycombs that give you extra life. I think those elements of the collectathon actually work pretty good but i think where it starts to fall apart for me and uh you know so i think this is where nostalgia doesn't blind me is <laughs> and uh i'm not referencing things that were just common for the time like i'm gonna be a little kinder to the camera because that's just how cameras worked back then fair enough as far as the Faults that I think Banjo made was, for one, not saving progress of collectibles and stages. I found the lair to be a little confusing to navigate. Um, it wasn't always clear what you were supposed to do, like uh, the bucket, the pebble, the yep. crab that you had to fight. Like, oh, I didn't know I had to wait for it to stop and then attack its face. You might say that's obvious. I say I tried that, and then it clipped me anyway, so I just assumed there was something else I was supposed to do. Yeah, that messed me uh, up for that, too. Yeah, so I think those are where Banjo really faults, is, yeah, just unnecessary amount of musical notes to collect. I think they could have just removed the musical note doors and just had jiggies. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah, man. a little bit repetitive, a little unclear of what you're supposed to do. So yeah. overall, my opinion, my closing opinion on it is as far as platformers go, as far as N64 games go, I think it definitely deserves praise it gets. But I would be skeptical to say it deserves the gold. <laughs> All yeah. right. So... Do you th would you recommend it? Do you say, play this game? Like, would you say, if someone comes up to you and say, hey, should I play this? What are you going to say, yes or no? I would ask if, 
<laughs> I would ask if they like Metroidvania games. Okay. okay. And it would depend on that. If you don't like Metroidvanias, I would say no. Okay. Because you have to like exploration in the dark. Mm-hmm. So if you're okay wandering, not being told where to go, it's a great game to play, <laughs> faults included. There you go. Because I think I do think the strengths outweigh the faults. Okay. But if you're not interested in wander mindless wandering, or I should say if you're not interested in keeping track of your own stats and progress, it's not for you. There you go. I think that I think that works. Um so I guess for me, I still take issue with any of the swimming mechanics that are involved in this game. Like, that is a pretty big negative for me. Um, Touching on your musical note doors, I think one of the reasons I've always felt this game is slower is because to actually get everything, you have to get practically every musical note. Yeah. Like, Super Mario 64, you could beat that with 70 stars, and you're done. Like, you just go beat it. Who cares about those last 50 stars? In this game, the Gruntilda end fake out, spoiler alert, um, <laughs> if you actually want to go fighter, you have to have like all but, you have to have like 820. Yeah, you need like 820 notes. And yeah, 820 out of 900. So you, so have you to essentially have, need yeah. 98% completion yeah, of the yeah. musical notes, which is essentially the worst part of the game in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's one of the reasons why I've always felt this game was slower than Super Mario 64 because you do have to get more to actually finish it and take that as you will but that's a, that's a negative yeah. for me yeah. so because you could get 70 stars still explore 80 yeah. percent of the game and then say you beat the game and then if you want more you can go get the remainder but in banjo you essentially have to have get everything to get everything to even beat the game and then yeah. you have to have like 865 or 800, 870 to get the last power up. So it's like, oh, and then a hundred, and then a hundred Jengas to get an unlock sequence you can't even do yeah, you without cheating. Use, you can't even use it. So I mean, I did that for this playthrough. I did literally everything. This is the first time I played through this game since 1999, and it took me about 15 hours to beat the 360 version so i mean it's not a terrible length even doing everything so if someone wants to play it like go for it it can be fun you prep me but like most people will probably love this game just like even with the camera like most people will probably absolutely love and adore this game those few issues for me still keep it out of my personal top 10 but i'm definitely a lot more warmed up to it than i used to be so would I recommend I would it? also say, yeah, if sure. I'm going to recommend, I would recommend the Switch version. Safe states? Where you have safe states. <laughs> yeah. Because you will want those safe states. Yes, Take my word for true. it. That's true. There's so many perfect time puzzles that piss me off, especially when they come to swimming along with them. But, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, someone asked me if they if they should play it. I'd say sure. Give it a shot. Yeah. Like, it used to be a, nah, don't even waste your time, but this replay has <laughs> definitely softened me up a bit. But, yeah, I'm honestly glad that uh, you guys were trying to troll me by suggesting this game. I have may have grumped at it a lot as I played through it, but I'm definitely a lot more warmed up to it than I used to be. Um, I understand Banjo fans a little bit better now. And, I mean, I've always been of the opinion, like, like what you like. Like, yeah, I'm not going to go sure. try to bag on something and try to convince people that they shouldn't like it. Yeah, like, yeah. That's kind if of you stupid. like Banjo, play Banjo. Yeah, exactly. So I'm actually glad that I got to see it like this now. Like, I've never wanted to replay this game since I did not like it back in the day. So, like, I'm glad that we did this. And uh, I'm glad that we're going to be keeping doing these Game of the Month podcasts so we could see other games we might not have played, other games we might not have liked back in the day, give it a new try. Like I think it's uh I think it's gonna be a good experience. So if any of you want to get in on the game of the month discussions, uh, you can join the Discord, uh, put suggestions in there, we'll choose a game for the next month, and we'll do the discussion the last Friday of the month, just like this Banjo Kazooie uh talk here that we had here with me and Zachary. Zachary, thank you again for joining me. Hopefully next time we could get a couple of the others in, <laughs> like they said, they're going to some technical issues, no some scheduling issues. Yeah. Just 
is what I it think is. It's worked anyway. We had, we had an discussion. advocate. We yeah. So <laughs> yep, it's been a pleasure being on advocate and uh, guy who used to just absolutely hate yeah. on the game. Like it works out okay. Yeah, we seem to have uh, reached the same conclusion that yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Like <laughs> out of ten, I'd give it a nice solid seven, eight. Like before, it used to be a four. Like I think that's a I think that's a good assessment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a much for numbers. I feel they're a little nah, arbitrary. Uh, but yeah, numbers yeah. suck. I just have to give it on the scale that people are used yeah. to. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> As for my scale, I would say if you're interested in the genre, it's definitely worth a shot. Oh, absolutely. But thank you again for joining me today, Zachary. I hope yep. you have a wonderful evening. And all of you as well have a wonderful evening. Check us out on the Discord if you want to get in on the Game of the Month. And then uh, as long as you can follow the channel rules, you're welcome to join us here in these discussions. So we'll see what next game, next month's game is. There goes my inability to talk. It <laughs> took this long for it to show up. I'm actually really impressed. But uh, we're going to call it there. So thank you again for joining us, everybody. We'll see you back next time.